Well, good evening. Welcome to our Thanksgiving Eve service here at uh, Trinity Lutheran Church in North Branch. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Kathy Ajo providing for that kind of opening special music as we gather. Uh, but yeah, so hopefully everybody has a, has a happy Thanksgiving tomorrow and that, that, uh, that, that, you, that there are many things in your lives that you are grateful for. I know I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Um, so, yeah. But let's go ahead and uh, begin our worship. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. God blesses us with gifts of love, with food and clothing, home and family. God blesses us with daily work and all we need from day to day. God protects us in time of danger and guards us from every evil. God calls us into relationship with him and forms us into one holy people, the Church of Jesus Christ in this place. Therefore, we offer thanks and praise to the Lord our God. O Lord our God, we will give thanks to you forever. And now let's uh, sing our first song, For the Beauty of the Earth, led by Barb Mork.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right, and the strength to serve the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When they saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Okay, so we've got one more sermon from <laughs> kind of separation. Um, so, yeah, you know, typically Thanksgiving Eve, um, at least the last couple years, uh, I've always been a little distracted during the sermon because I have pie on my mind. And so hopefully there, you at home, uh, maybe you have some pie you can have uh, after you watch the service tonight uh, to kind of, and, and maybe just remember uh, what it's like to be in that fellowship hall again, just with with our family, with our friends. Um, it, you know, <laughs> fingers crossed. I mean, it, it's looking like, you know, next Thanksgiving we'll be able to do that. But I know this is, this is really really hard. You know, on uh, Sunday morning, uh, we had our fellowship uh, kind of coffee hour on Zoom, and uh, it was it was a very common theme uh, for all of us in, in kind of talking about Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving memories that that it's this is this is hard. It's hard to be away from your family. It's hard to have these restrictions. It's hard to be separated. And so, I mean, even after eight months of, you know, kind of ebbs and flows, there's still been a separation. So I, I don't know what you, about you, but I'm, I'm thankful that there there is some good vaccine news. And hopefully <laughs> we can just make it a few more months and uh, and come together again, depending on how fast they can get kind of vaccine stuff rolled out. But in today's gospel lesson, it's always, this is one of those stories where Jesus encounters somebody and he does something amazing and you're just left a little, just disappointed in people's reactions. Like there's 10 lepers, there's 10 people who have been, they've been isolated, they can't be near their family or friends, like they, they have to be totally separate and kind of on their own, like no contact with society um, besides other lepers. And, and they encounter Jesus and, uh, and, and they ask Jesus for mercy. And, and Jesus grants it in abundance. It says, go show yourselves to the priests. And they went and they showed themselves and they were or on their way and they were healed. But it's just only one comes back to say thank you. Only one of them returns to show gratitude to Jesus. And I think it's easy for us to maybe, you know, think, think less of those nine who... Those nine ungrateful lepers who had been he who had been healed and, and don't even have the time to come back uh, to see Jesus, but you know, in the midst of what we've been going through, I wonder if those nine were just so excited to go see their family, if they were just so excited 
that they would once again get to rejoin with society. I wonder if they just, that excitement of reunion with those that they had lost or had been taken from in terms of separation. I just, I wonder if they were just so excited they, they couldn't wait. <laughs> they couldn't go back and say thank you to Jesus because they just had to, to get on, to go back, to see their loved ones, family, and friends. At least that's, this year, that's the way I'd like to look at it. Is that the separation is healed and they're able to come home. You know, luckily for us, you know, the, we, we still have, like, we have the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Zoom calls, and we have, we're able to kind of participate worship. Again, not in the way we want to, but we're still able to in, in, in some fashion. But these ten were just completely cut off from everyone else. And so I definitely find myself, and I'm guessing a lot of you do, cutting these other nine who, who didn't come back and say thank you a little a little more slack but what's really interesting though is that this story is the samaritan is obviously an enemy kind of the jews but he's the one who comes back and says thank you he's the one who who falls down at jesus's feet and praises him and so i think it's the attitude that we hope to have especially this year like we're separated things are different we're not reunited yet but there is hope in the near future for that reunion for that togetherness again like i mean i every time i walk in the sanctuary and and i mean we have those cardboard pictures and that's definitely better than empty pews, but it's nowhere near walking in on a Thanksgiving Eve service and, and seeing people that I had seen just a few days before, sitting in the pews ready to praise God in gratitude for for what we have. So we're we're praising God still. We're separate, but the work continues. This congregation still blesses. I am so grateful for all of the dedicated volunteers and all of the dedication for you who contribute financially or, or through prayer. There's so much to be grateful for, even in the midst of all of this. There's so much to be grateful for. I know most of us have our health. Our families are healthy. We've got a roof over our heads. We've got food in the fridge. We've got time to spend with our immediate family. Or hopefully we can, if, if, for those of us who may be alone, hopefully we can connect um, by phone or uh, on the internet with, with loved ones. And that's just kind of this, this understanding of soon but not yet. Like that's the promise of the gospel is that, is that we have our lives in Christ, that we have the fullness of forgiveness and redemption, but we don't see kind of that end perfect result yet. Like we are saints, but we don't see that yet. We're completely forgiven, redeemed, and holy, but we can't see that yet. You know, the gospel and, and, and faith itself is about living in the present with the hope of what's to come. So as you celebrate Thanksgiving this year, if you're if you're just kind of by yourselves or, or, or a small gathering or, or whatever you do, I hope you have a th happy Thanksgiving. And I hope that you find gratitude in your hearts. And I hope that you're like the one leper who comes back and praises God for what God has done. We will be made whole again. And I look forward to that day. And until then, we still praise God. 
and we still love and care for each other. Hopefully all of you have a happy Thanksgiving. And now we have another extra special gift um, in special music from Oliver Cruschel. So take care. Prelude in A minor. <laughs> Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give thanks for the work you've accomplished through your people, and we pray for your continued blessings in our ministry together. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Bountiful God, you feed us through the richness of the land, water, sunlight, and ample crops. Bless all those who cultivate the land to bring us forth its bounty, especially farmers and migrant workers. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. 
Send us to love those most in need of your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you open the hearts and compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the care and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those most in need of your mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through meals and conversations with family and friends. In this time of thanksgiving, steer us from passive receiving to active response, from old quarrels to reconciliation, and from overconsumption to true gratitude. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who have gone before us, by their example enrich the generosity of our witness to others. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of laughter send you to share joy with everyone. The brother of the poor send you to bring hope and healing to the broken and despairing. The spirit of wonder sends you to join all creation in offering thanks. Let's turn to our closing song, Let All Things Now Living. Once again, led by Barb Mork. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. 